Now this next example is a real life drama that played out in Chicago. So it is a Chicago drama and I have toned it down a bit so that it is now Mayberry rather than Chicago. But this actually did happen and uh, caused all kinds of controversy. But here is the example. On all of his savings account at First National Bank of Mayberry that provide monthly interest, Barney rounds the interest amount to the nearest penny. Now that makes sense. When the interest amount is rounded up, then that interest amount is transferred to the depositor's account. That makes sense. But here is the uh, part where Barney gets into trouble. When the interest amount is rounded down to the nearest penny, Barney then transfers that fraction of a penny that is truncated to his own personal account. Okay, so this is something he shouldn't be doing. What is the distribution of the amount of money that Barney makes per month from this scheme from his four depositors? Now let me give you a quick example. This is a realization for just one depositor. If Opie has $9.87 in an interest-bearing account that pays 5.25% annually, in one particular a month, how much will he earn? Well, he will take his principal, which is 987. He will take the annual rate of 5.25%, divide it by 12 months, so this will be the amount that he will make per month. And when those two are multiplied, he will get 4.318 cents. So 4.318 cents rounds down to 4 cents. So 4 cents will get into Opie's account and then here is where Barney causes some trouble, bad Barney, is he will transfer 0.318 cents, that is the fraction of the penny, is going to go to his own account. Now he is not going to make much money off of this if there are just four depositors. But if there was a bank and it had 40,000 or 50,000 or 60,000 accounts, this would actually be a lot of money that was transferred to Barney's account and that's what actually happened in Chicago. So here are some Mayberry factoids. The distribution of the fraction of a penny that is transferred to Barney's account will either be a zero and that occurs with probability one half or it will be a uniform random variable be between zero and a half of a penny. In the case of Opie, the realization here was a 0.318, but that could have been anywhere between zero and one half, and that's where the uniform distribution comes in. The number of accounts that generate revenue, that is for Barney, is a binomial distribution with, with parameters n equals four and p equals one half. So each depositor is basically a coin flip that will either generate him some revenue or not generate him some revenue. This means that the total revenue which is generated from Barney for the four accounts y is a mixture of a degenerate distribution at zero and by degenerate distribution it has all of its mass at zero and that's when all four of the accounts are rounded up and various sums of uniform zero one halves. So here is some Apple code to work out these uh, values. If x is set to a uniform random variable with, with parameters zero and one half, that takes care of this, then x zero is going to be that degenerate distribution at zero all of the mass for this distribution is concentrated at zero. X1 will then be the uniform zero one half and that's if you get one depositor generating revenue for Barney but if you get two customers or two depositors generating revenue for Barney then what you do is you add up that is convolution IID two of these uniform zero one halves the same for three depositors generating revenue and four depositors generating revenue for Barney. You add up these uniform zero one halves. Then finally you go to the binomial distribution and you list out its 
probabilities, which will be 1 16th, 4 16th, 6 16th, 4 16th, 1 16th. Those are the five possibilities for the binomial 4 1 half distribution. Those are the probabilities. And then finally, we take a mixture and we mix using these probabilities from the p vector and we put in the random variables x0 through x4 and that y will be the total amount of revenue that comes in to Barney and on the next page you can see that will be a mixed discrete continuous random variable it is discrete with a spike at 0 of 1 16th and then everywhere else it falls between 0 and a half, a half and 1, 1 and 3 halves, 3 halves and 2. And this is a mixed continuous discrete distribution that tells you how much revenue Barney will make. If you then apply the mean function and the variance function in Apple, you will get 1 half cent as his expected um, revenue and you will get a variance of 5.48 cents squared. Now if you want a little bit of intuition on this one half number right here, it can be interpreted in the following fashion. One half is the sum of each of these four accounts. And the first account will give you an expected value of one eighth. Now where does that one eighth come from? Well a uniform random variable between zero and a half will give you one-fourth of a cent, but it turns out that only happens half of the time, so that means one-eighth is how much he can expect to generate from the first account, an eighth from the next account, an eighth from the third account, and an eighth from the fourth account. Add up one-eighth four times and you get a one-half. On the next page is a Monte Carlo in simulation in R to see if this uh, mean and variance of one half and five forty eights are correct and here is the simulation. We are going to replicate this experiment 100,000 times. For each replication you will have four customers and your probability is one half that each of them will generate some revenue for Barney. So we take Barney and have a vector set up that contains all zeros. The length of the vector is 100,000 and we put a zero into each element of that vector. Then for i going from 1 to n rep, this is a for loop and notice it begins with the curly brace and ends with the curly brace. The number of accounts which will generate Barney some revenue is a random binomial random variate and we will generate one of those with n equals 4 and p equals 1 half. That will generate you a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 and then depending on how many accounts generate Barney some revenue what you do is you either you, well let's let's say for example it is 3 then what you do is you add up three random uniforms between zero and a half. And that will give you the ith experiment and you place that into the ith element of the vector named Barney which started at zeros. Finally if you find the mean of all of those and the variance of all of those experiments in the vector Barney the means you can see here ran it five times they are hovering around one half so that supports our analytic solution and if you look at the variance those variances here are also hovering around 548 so what we got by Apple is being supported this is a fairly sophisticated example of using the uniform distribution